please give us your definition of a hedge fund and perhaps describe some of the tools and techniques used to manage the downside risk while actively seeking alpha? Hedge funds, quite a loosely uh, used word, but uh, they have become fairly well regulated and so it's pretty clear now in, in terms of the industry, in terms of what represents a hedge fund and what doesn't. The biggest difference uh, between a hedge fund and traditional fund management is that in traditional fund management you have an index that you try and mimic. And in many cases the index could go up, the index could go down. So in a traditional uh, investment vehicle, you could be invested in a top performing fund that has a negative year, but the year is less negative than the index. Whereas in a hedge fund, your single objective is to produce an absolute return. And an absolute return means positive return, preferably above inflation. And to do that, we have very different ways of, of positioning and approaching a market. We're not obliged to mimic any index. I don't have to be long a bond, I don't have to be matching an index, I can literally take a blank canvas, have a look at the world and, and start uh, defining some um, strategy that is going to replicate my point of view. So if I think the world is going to blow up, I can be outright short uh, a government bond or I could be outright paid in an interest rate swap which is essentially the same as a, the, being short a bond. I don't have to be long. I, I, I could be neutral. I can be long if I want to be. So that's one of the differences. Another major difference between traditional fund management and hedge funds, which I don't think is that well understood, is that in a traditional investment vehicle, you have a defined uh, fee. So generally, you have an annual fee that is charged on a monthly basis to the underlying, underlying portfolio, regardless of whether the underlying portfolio is making you money or losing you money. So if a unit trust has a really bad year and they lose 10% and they start the next year, the next year they start from scratch and you still pay fees. In a hedge fund, we have a basic management fee and a performance fee. The difference being, if I have a negative year, I have to make back the negative year plus all costs assigned to the fund to get back to a point where I can charge fees. So in the hedge fund space, if I don't make money and my clients don't make money, I don't get paid fees. So it's a massive incentive to keep on motivated and keep on honest and keep on involved. And it, essentially the fee structure is higher because of the performance fee is anything from 10 to 20% um, of the upside above the high water. But essentially at the end of the day, if you look at your net return, it's obviously uh, much smoother and exceeds the traditional um, investment uh, vehicle because your fee structure can be very onerous uh, if your traditional vehicle is not performing. Uh, the other big difference is that a traditional uh, investment fund is not going to use gearing. They are generally managing a fixed pile of assets and that is what they have to make their return. In the hedge fund world, we can gear, so we can use the amount of money we have under management to leverage up our point of view. So it sounds a bit risky and it sounds dangerous, but obviously it gives you great opportunity to amplify the return and the risk, but obviously part of our job is to manage the risk at all times, upside, downside, um, and to make sure that the capital at risk that we're employing at any given juncture makes economic sense and makes sense for the, the end investor. The, um, the hedge fund space in terms of gearing has various restrictions in terms of how much we can gear relative to underlying. There's strict mandates now that we're in the, the, the regulated space within the collective investment scheme where we are not permitted to go completely berserk. We're not allowed to just sit here and go, well, I'm going to bet everything on red and, you know, good luck, and if it doesn't work well, you know, phone me at the airport on my way out. So we are fairly tightly regulated at the moment in terms of how, uh, how much gearing we can use, how much leverage we can use, and what the underlying risk matrix of the fund is. The actual mandate has to be um, submitted to the Financial Services Board and approved prior to anybody being given the go-ahead to manage a particular hedge fund under any given FSB2 license. 
So yes, risk is a bad thing if it's not managed properly. But I think in the cases of hedge funds, we are able to take the risk by design. We want to take the risk because we're motivated to give our clients a superior return. And generally, that's a massive difference between someone who is relying in a long, short equity fund or, or long only in terms of unit trust is managing on their sector rotation and their ability to put a finite amount of cash to work. We can take that amount and multiply it up uh, fairly generously.